Ladies and gentlemen, the Valencia Half Marathon 2024 was a race that we had all been waiting for. This was an event that featured Yomif Kajelcha, Solomon Berega, Daniel Mateko, and so many top athletes from this year who are in top shape. So with the race on the way, we can see the tall figure of Yomif Kajelcha sprinting right about where the cursor is. He is going out fast. So fast that for the first few hundred meters, the pacers struggled just to get in front of the race. This part in the race is around about a mile in. Now notice how we have Yomif Kajelcha and also Dani Mateko tucked in firmly behind the two pacers here. Also in this race was Solomon Berega, who was wearing a headband, the orange headband. He is currently in around about 4th to 5th position in the middle of that group with a light green vest on. We're going to pass forward to the next stage, hopefully get rid of some of this shaky camera footage as it keeps cutting on the stream. Yama Kajelcha, I mean, just look at that guy. He looks like he's jogging, guys. He actually looks like he's not even trying, and he is running like 420 per mile. The guy has done some serious speed training from back when he was a 1500 meter and indoor mile runner to the point where he makes this pace look like a jog. To put this into perspective, you can see how much taller he is than everyone else. Yomif isn't exactly tall, he's only around 6 foot to 6 foot 1, but because everyone else in this lead group is like 5'6", five, 5'7", five, he just looks so much taller than everyone other than say the pacer closest to our camera. So right now we can see that Yomif Kajelcha means business. As I was watching this race, I knew that he wanted to break the world record just by the fact that he was behind the pacers the entire way. If you've ever seen Yomif Kajelcha race, you'll know that he tends to race quite tactically and he loves a sit and kick star race. Well, there was one pacer that seriously struggled to hold the pace and they hadn't even made it to the 10k mark yet. But unfortunately, the other pacer was also struggling and this meant that Yomif Kajelcha had to move up onto the left hand side of the pacer. Here you can see the pacer trying his hardest to keep up, but this just goes to show how fast the pace actually is. Both pacers now being dropped by Yomif Kajelcha, Salomon Berega moving through and it's over. I'm so sorry, but the pacers just could not keep up with this pace and Yomif Kajelcha was not hanging around. In fact, he wanted to achieve the world record. It was pretty clear. Daniel Mateko looked so smooth, but so did Salomon Berega behind him. Yomif Kajelcha in the lead took control of this race and didn't seem to really care that he was doing most of the work on the front, which I found kind of confusing because I was expecting him to just, you know, sit back and let the other guys do some of the work or at least let the pacers do the work. But right now he realized that he slightly went off the world record pace. So he just moved past the pacers and just dropped them. So here is the 10k split, crazy, crazy fast, 27-12 for 10k. Ladies and gentlemen, that will win basically every 10k road race in the entire world. I'm not even joking, that is insane. Yomif Kajelcha was able to run this pace while still looking relatively relaxed. But the, cra <laughs> the scariest thing about this, I'm literally losing my words right now because I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. The problem is, is he still had a group of runners behind him, even after going through in 27 12. <laughs> this is crazy. There's some new beetroot juice going around because I am actually in shock at how these guys have just run 27 12 on a road race. And bear in mind, the road is wet, so it won't be optimal. They are actually still hanging with Yomif. He's probably thinking, what the hell do I need to do to actually win this race? This is insane. You know, maybe sub 57 isn't off the cards quite yet. We're looking at a pace where these guys could potentially be running 56 in the future. So we fast forwarded to 40 minutes and we had a very aggressive move. Another surge yet again from Yomif Kajelcha, which dropped the majority of the lead pack, including Salomon Berega. So Yomif Kajelcha now had the job of dropping some Kenyans that were doing a great job of not letting him go. They had slowed slightly here. They were now three seconds slower than the world record pace. 
and I think that someone shouted that to Yomif, either one of the people in the crowds or someone on the bike. And when he heard that, he literally injected some pace out of nowhere. Look how subtle it is. It's only been 40 minutes and bang. Look at this. Look, it doesn't even, sorry about the footage, it is kind of freezy. Look at this. He is literally dropping them with ease. He is just gliding away. One of the Kenyans tried to respond, but he just can't. Yom of Kajolcha put in a really aggressive surge there, but many people didn't notice it. They just thought that the guys behind were slowing down. Again, I just want to reiterate that it's literally raining and the road is slippery and he's still running this fast. Imagine if it had been a dry day. <laughs> I, just, I am absolutely speechless. This is insane. Is he actually going to run the world record and is he actually going to get under 57.30? Stay tuned to see what time he runs and who actually wins because some of the Kenyans are battling to try and keep up with him and close that gap once again. When I look back on the footage, I realized that Yomif Kajelcha was having a bit of a nightmare trying to drop some of these Kenyan guys because they were speeding up and slowing down for the majority of the race. We're going to fast forward to 50 minutes in and we can see that Yomif finally made a fully decisive move which dropped absolutely everyone. Again, look at the road. It's literally reflecting the, ski it is, it's reflecting the sky and the trees. It's so shiny with surface water which is not ideal for running. It really isn't it can be rather slippery and Kip Chogi mentioned this in his uh, Berlin Marathon I think it was in 2018 where he ran against Gaia Dola and it was just so slippery that they couldn't run the world record pace and here Yomif is literally running under world record pace in slippery wet conditions unbelievable 51 minutes on the clock Yomif has no options now but to try and dig as deep as he can Remember guys, the last split showed he was 3 seconds slower than the world record. 3 seconds is pretty easy to make up. He can definitely do that. We definitely think that he's got the potential. He only has around 800 meters remaining in this race. He has to really push hard now. He's going to have to finish with around about a 212, 213, 800 meters, which is insane in and of itself if you're an 800 meter runner. So here we go. 54 20 at the kilometer 20 is 12 seconds under the world record this is insane <laughs> do you know what guys people said people laughed at me two days ago they laughed at me when i said yomif will one run the world record and he could even run under 57 everyone was commenting like no you're talking nonsense or oh you're making stuff up again every time my predictions have been right every time apart from once this entire season and unfortunately although that wasn't my prediction i said it's possible i predicted he would run the world record and he would win the race which is exactly what he is doing right now he is 12 whole seconds under the world record pace and he only has around 70 to 80 seconds left in this race you can really see yom is starting to dig deep now look at everyone with their umbrellas and their coats on it is awful weather for a world record and still he is managing to dig deep and put everything on the line you can see him here gritting his teeth properly struggling and doing everything that he can to try and keep under that world record pace as much as possible there is nothing worse than being hit with that lactic acid heavy legs heavy heavy arms feeling so out of breath your lungs are burning but you have no one to run with all he is surrounded by scooters and motorbikes that are 10 meters in front and behind him. He has no one to run with, no one to go off. It's simply just him against the clock. This is so raw. This is so insane. He is making human history right now. Running through the floods there, they just aren't affecting him. Yamav Kajeltra will now have to dig deep and use every ounce of his track speed he has that he used to use against Mo Farah back in the day. He is on the finishing stretch now. He has officially opened up his kick and he is driving hard for home. I mean, even though we have awful weather here, look at all the crowds out to support him. Do they realize that they are actually witnessing history in the making? Yomif Kajelcha coming through to win the Valencia Half Marathon. This is absolutely insane. It's going to be an official world record. I cannot believe this. His bib is literally breaking. It is so wet. He is drenched. The roads are slippery. And there you go, guys. He has just broken the world record. That is insane. Yomif collapsed to the ground with the media snapping shots of him and reacting to him. I don't think he realizes he's even broke the world record. 
<laughs> that is insane. He looks absolutely exhausted. So we're going to take a look at the results of this race. Where were the other Kenyans that were very close to him? Did they manage to run sub 58? No, they didn't. We had Mateko in second who trains with Kipchoge. He ran 58.17. Then we had Lazo, who a lot of the guys on the forum that I mentioned yesterday were saying he was in great shape. He got third. He was a massive breakthrough athlete. 58.21. Vincent Langat, uh, debut half marathon, 5841. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> oh, uh, Weldon Langat, 1 hour 47. I, I just can't believe this. Bellew came in in 5941. We are looking at some insane times. I'm just trying to look for Borrego. I don't know if he dropped out. Does anyone know if Borrego dropped out? Salomon Borrego? Unless I'm being blind right now, I can't see Salomon Borrego anywhere. So, uh, ah, I'm kind of disappointed because I thought that he was going to be uh, uh, kind of up there, you know? He was one of the guys that I was expecting to also break the world record. 57.30 there for Yomif Kajelcha, the world record. I went over to his IAAF profile. This is Yomif Kajelcha's results for this season. So he's actually had a really healthy and good season leading up to this world record. He's run multiple 5,000 meters in well under 13 minutes. He's run a 3K in under 7.30, and he's run a bunch of 10,000 meters in well under 27, like 26.30, 26.40. This is the kind of speed that he produced to allow him to run the half marathon world record. And even the likes of his 5K races, he ran a 12.38, obviously that was in May at the Bislett Games. He ran a 5K road race, the Adi Zero Road to Record in 13 flat. And he also ran a 10k road race. Uh, I also covered that. It was the 10 kilometer Villa da Loreda in Spain as well. 26.37. So, you know, <laughs> this guy is amazing. I mean, I can't wait to see the future. Guys, thank you for watching today's video. Please subscribe if you're new as I'll be uploading every single day all of the latest races and the running drama news. This is the most often uploading running channel on YouTube and I'm the fastest growing running channel on YouTube as well. Here we can see Yomis progressions over the years in the half starting at 59.17 coming down to 57.41 and eventually now 57.30 having run the world record today. Congratulations Yomif, that was fantastic. I'll catch you tomorrow guys.